Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be part two of my March wrap up. Now if you saw part one, which I'll leave in the cards above, um, I actually was trying to do a vlog style wrap up for March but I had to abandon it halfway through because I got sick and I lost my voice and for a couple of weeks I couldn't talk for prolonged periods of time. Uh, certainly not the length of time that was needed to be able to talk about the books that I'd been reading. So this is going to pick up uh, from where I left off. Like I, say, uh, like I said, I think at the end of that uh, wrap up, I did actually have quite a good reading month. Um, I actually managed to finish uh, six books, I think. Um, no, maybe seven books. Um, and I, I, feel, I thought that I'd done really quite well. Um, and I managed to um, knock off quite a few prompts in the month of March as well, so that um, my TBR is very much being tackled. So the first book I'm going to talk about in this video is a book that I was really, really excited to get to. Um, I, on the off chance, I searched for it on NetGalley to see if it was available, and I found that it was, and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I'm not sure I'm going to get approved. I've been... I've had a couple of rejections from NetGalley recently and I wasn't sure that I was going to get an approval for this one um, but very excitingly I had the approval email come through and I couldn't wait to get to it um, and that book is Electra by Jennifer Saint. Uh, this book comes out at the very end of April if you're looking to pick it up after this um, but Jennifer Saint did write one of my favourite books of last year and that was Ariadne. She is writing Greek myth retellings and she's doing them from the female perspective. Uh, Ariadne I absolutely adored and Electra I enjoyed. Um, maybe not quite as much as Ariadne but definitely enough that Jennifer Saint is an author that I am now going to follow and very much look forward to her bringing out more releases. So in Electra, again, we're following three women from Greek mythology, uh, Greek history, and they are Cassandra of Troy, uh, Clytemnestra, who is the wife of Agamemnon, and uh, Electra, who is the daughter of Clytemnestra and Agamemnon. And this follows events before and after the Battle of Troy. Uh, Cassandra is a priestess of Apollo and she begs Apollo to give her the gift of foresight, which he does. However, when he does that, he then curses her to not be believed. Um, and this is how she lives her life, being able to see disasters before they happen and not have anyone believe her when she tries to tell them. Clytemnestra is the wife of Agamemnon. Agamemnon is the brother-in-law of Helen, who is uh, captured and taken to Troy. Um, Helen is Clytemnestra's sister, uh, so he's a brother-in-law twice over because Helen and Clytemnestra are married brothers. And he goes to war and he carries out a despicable act of treachery, which Clytemnestra can't forgive him for and she spends the whole of the time that he's away plotting her revenge. Electra is their third daughter I think, yes third daughter and at the point that she goes, that her father goes away to war she's quite a young girl, still very impressionable, her father is her absolute hero, her absolute world and she cannot wait for the day that he comes home. Um, and she cannot see how the actions of her mother um, are justified, even though she's affected by the loss as much as her mother. She's not affected in the same way. She doesn't see it in the same light. She didn't have the same relationship. Um, and Jennifer Saint is digging into those relationships and how events can affect different people in different ways. And I found this very, very interesting and I did enjoy it and I found the writing style very accessible and like I say, I look forward to reading more books um, by Jennifer Saint. Um, 
and yeah it, it was just in some parts it was a little difficult to read uh, there are trigger warnings for rape and attempted rape and allusion to rape there is violence uh, as well so definitely be aware of that going into it um, but yes her writing is very accessible and I'm enjoying my journey through Greek history Greek mythology uh, that she's giving me the next book that I read was to fulfill the tackle my TBR prompt of read a book with royalty and I picked A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer and to say I fell in love is an understatement I adored this story I'm a massive Beauty and the Beast fan anyway Belle I've said before Belle is my Disney princess um, her, her Disney film came out when I was 12 years old and yes I know that ages me uh, but yes, I absolutely adore this story. Um, Belle, I absolutely identify with. Um, the Belle character in this isn't so much of um, the bookworm uh, that the original Belle is, but she's dragged um, from her real world. She lives in the real world. Her name is Harper. She lives in the real world. She lives in modern day world. And she is... Um, dragged into the fictional world of Emberfall where she's tasked with breaking the curse on Prince Wren. Uh, Prince Wren is cursed to take the form of a beast and devastate his land that he presides over. He's been hiding and pretending that the entire uh, royal family has fled um, the beast that is terrorising his, his lands and he's the only one other than his commander who knows the truth uh, when harper finds out what she's been brought there for uh, she does try now she doesn't make any promises to fall in love um but she decides to go about and work out with uh, prince wren other ways that they can defeat the beast because there are other issues going on in the world um and they obviously uh, are, are going to try and work on those and that's how we get their Belle and Beast story coming out. Like I say, absolutely adored this. I've already picked up um, A Heart So Fierce and Broken uh, from my library and that is definitely going to be a read. If I haven't already read this, it's definitely going to be one that I read very soon after this. So I'm looking forward to picking that up um, and also the follow-up of Owl So Dark and Deadly. Um, because I think this is going to be a series that I'm definitely going to have to get physical copies of um, and keep on my shelves because they're going to be ones that I'm going to want to reread again at some point. The final book that I finished was our book club pick for the month of March and that is A Place For Us. I'm not going to try and say the author's name um, because I will just get it wrong and I do apologise for that. I know that's not the done thing um, but yeah I'm, I'm just a little bit I can't quite get my tongue round it and I'd like someone to tell me how to say it um, I haven't found a pronunciation guide online to help me uh, but there will be a picture of it here for you anyway this is kind of a slice of life story following a family an Indian family in America um, kind of pre and post um, so kind of like late 80s through to current day-ish like late mid 2010s um and it's about how they uh how it's it's very insular to their world it's not so much how they integrate with the outside world um but there has been an event which has caused the son from the family to be separated and to leave the family and there is going to be a wedding uh the eldest daughter is going to get married and she wants the brother to come back and be at the wedding the first three parts of the book um were not easy to read because they were a lot of back and forth um in timeline um leading up to the event that means amar leaves the family and yeah it just wasn't easy to read um in that way in that style uh, I know I'm not the only one in the book club that found that I found it quite confusing the only part that was actually 
had any coherence for me was the final part of the book when we get all the events in the right timeline order from the father's point of view because he's the only one we don't hear from in the first three parts. I think it would have been much better a story and more impactful had maybe the author written um, the events from each uh, person's perspective or maybe picked each event from a couple of person's perspective and maybe told it um, two or three different ways and run through the timeline in chronological order instead of jumping backwards and forwards with each person. Um, but it was certainly quite insightful into how traditional Indian parents um, bring up their children in a modern world and certainly how some of the modern influences can change the children's perspective. So I appreciated it for that point of view. Um, however, it's not one that I'd pick up again um, and I'm not actually sure that I would pick up any more by this author either, which is quite sad because there were the bones of a good story there. Certainly it kept me reading because I wanted to know what the event was that had so profoundly affected the family that the son felt he needed to leave. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I needed to finish it. Um, and, but again, it's not going to be one that I go back to any time soon, unfortunately. I did make one final uh, pick from my Tuck on My TBR prompts, and that was to pick a book told in second person. Uh, when I did a search for books told in second person, the only one that really came up that was on my TBR was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I have started it. Um, I'm not making a lot of progress with it. I'm struggling a little bit. Um, the whole premise is good um, and I'm kind of liking this part of the story that I'm picking up and I'm enjoying. Um, the parts told in second person I'm not enjoying so much. Uh, so yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, I haven't finished it. Uh, I'm, I think I'm about 20% in. Um, I might try a little bit longer uh, through into April. I might carry it into April or I might just put it down for now. It may become one that's DNF completely. I'm not 100% certain on that right now, but I will give it a go and we'll see what we get from there. Uh, also, I have been listening to a couple of audiobooks on my journey to work because I'm now driving to work every day where I was walking before. Um, I didn't find walking, I don't find walking um, easy to listen to audiobooks. Uh, I do in my car find it easier to listen to them rather than, than walking. Uh, so I've kind of, I'd started The Hobbit, um, haven't got very far with it. And then I switched because after a lecture, I was still in the mood for some Greek um, mythology. And I wanted to explore more of the um, actual myths themselves rather than retellings of the myths. And someone recommended that, um, and I think it might have actually been a subscriber, um, someone recommended that I give the Stephen Fry books a go and I absolutely did. I have downloaded Heroes from my library app because that's the one that was available to me. Um, I know it's the second book that he wrote but I will go back and listen to the other one as soon as it becomes available. Um, but I'm absolutely loving it, really enjoying it and again that one is going to carry over into April and so will The Hobbit. Uh, if You'll already know that if you watched my April TBR which I will leave linked up in the cards as well for you. So that's all the books that I read in the month of March. How did you get on in March? Please let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you all in the comments box down below. If you've enjoyed this video and are enjoying my content, then please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel. I make videos and I put them up every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye.